Welcome everybody. We're, I'm, well, we're, I'm, I'm doing an extension of the kitchen. Now you've seen the thumbnail, you've seen the title. I want to talk through um, some of the basics of preparing a room ready for spraying because this room I am going to be spraying. I'm not spraying the kitchen units, but I will be spraying the walls and uh, quite possibly the woodwork. I thought what I'd do, I'd do a video just to try and touch on the sort of things you need to do uh, when you're preparing ready for spraying. Now, yeah, I've been, I've had a good day preparing this room um, ready for today so I can actually get sprayed. Now, first things first, I'm gonna step back so you can see. I have on the floor the prep board, the prep board, cardboard on a roll. Now, there's various different makes, this Q1, and there's the prep board and there's a few others. And I get that down because it's onto a hard tiled floor, wants to keep that protected. And it's also, it's nice to sweep up over when you actually come at the end of the day and you need to just to sweep up any bits that you've got from cleaning down any, um, any of the walls or anything like that. So that's what I've done. First things, first things, I'm dropping my stuff all over the place. Um, first things first, I've actually got the floor protection down. Then I went round, Doing all the light fittings, that is just a case of, if you're not seeing these, these are the, I've got 3M hand maskers. It's a, that's a 12 inch, 30 mil, 30 mil, 300 mil piece of paper with some Q1 tape on. This is the medium tape, I would call it the, um, the one that gives you a sharp line. It's like an orangey color. You just rip it off, jobs are good. And then you wrap that around the lights. And I've gone around and I've done all that shut the top floor. All the lights are done all the way around. I've done the Velux, a similar sort of process. I've actually gone around with tape first, just to give me an edge to work to, to put um, the tape, drop sheet tape, um, on using the 3M hand masker. So I go around with that to get a nice edge. I, what I also did, because the Velux has got a bit of splashing, you can see that it got some splashes from the plaster. I just went around with a damp cloth and wiped off the Velux frame just so there was no contaminants on before I actually went around with that. Then use that or I've actually got plastic bagging on a sheet as well, various sizes and I can sheet over the windows and then just take them up for protection with some more tape. Now, when you come to your tape that you use that doesn't have to be too detrimental, it's just a case of taping stuff down. I've got some of this um, Indessa tape. It's like the traditional masking tape. It's not bad. It holds in place and it's, oh, it's, it's cheap. So you can actually use that. That's cheap. Now, what can you say? saying? What tape do you use on the floors? Well, I, if you're doing it properly, these floorboard um, cardboards have their own dedicated tape to tape the joints because that has to be um, like a, a waxy waterproof tape to stop anything going through if you did spill some water or paint on the floor. You don't want it actually softening up your um, cardboard that's there. And that is what it is. It's like, let's put these bits down. And this is what it's like. It's Quite, quite sticky, but it's actually quite shiny, like a waterproof coating on it. Now that is, I don't know if you can see it, it's prep as well, which is Serret. So it's from the Serret company. That on the floor and then round the well, perimeter, I was gonna say, round the edges, I still go around with some, either that or I've got some of the, how do you pronounce that, washy washi tape which is really nice as well you want something that sticks down nicely and it actually holds in place if you get any spray on it it's not going to soften up so that's that right the next thing i just want to touch on you know i like the silly boys i have got i don't know you can see over there i'll point to it just there yeah and i've got them just here the light fittings and sockets. Now I've not used them on that because it was a, a, a double socket and a single and I couldn't get them off far enough to actually put my silly boys um, protectors on. But I have done that all the way around. So I'm actually all ready for spraying and I'll, what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna spray with because this is bare plaster. 
I've got some areas in there that had got cheap contract mat emulsion on before, and then the builder's actually got some areas that is actually skimmed out. So my preparation for this room was, once I'd got everything bagged up, and I'd even, I've even, look, look how good I've been. I've even bagged up the new trifold doors, you can see that. Again, with the drop sheet, it's about eight foot drop, and it just tapes it up. So that's all done. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be spraying it with, if I can, can you see what I've got? I've got the Isomat, it's the white primer two in one. I did a previous video on that where I brushed it and I thinned it 10%. Found it a little bit, yeah, hard to put on. So I'm going with it with the sprayer and the sprayer I've got today is the, if you can still see down there, uh, it's the 495 Graco. And I've got, I've just put my tri-tip gun on. I, I like to use my Graco gun for more fine finishing. It's a nicer, expensive contract gun. And then this, the T360, I use when I've just got blast, well, I say blasting, that's the wrong word. Blasting out of emulsions and wash coats. Got an extension bar on, that's about 12 inches. And I've actually got a clean shot on the end as well. I'm using a 516 spray tip. If you want to know about spray tips and spraying in there on a tri tech guard. Now, I want to spray this, the Isomat primer, the two in one, and I've thinned it down more. Having spoken to a few people, they just say, oh yeah, you thin it down and just use it as a wash coat. Now that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be using it as a wash coat. Now I've thinned it actually 25%. It looks quite thin in the tub now, and I'm gonna see how it goes. If I struggle spraying it, I will add a little bit more. Now the purpose of using this is because it's a good base to actually use the Isomat Premium color which i'll be using later next week so for now i just want to talk to you about actually preparing the room up and actually um, spraying it with the isomat two-in-one primer you can use um dedicated plaster primers but knowing how good this was when i used it on that last video in my own house it gave a cracking lovely sound base so i thought i'll give it a go and give it another second chance with me actually using it through a sprayer now Bare plaster, what do you do with that? It's clearly you need a thin down coat of emulsion, i.e. what I'm gonna be using. Because we've got contract mat on that ceiling in that kitchen area there, again, this primer, this two-in-one primer acts as a good ceiling base to go over, well, I'm gonna say old, cheap, powdery, well, I'll say powdery, cheap contract mat emulsions, and that's what that was in there. So I'm gonna be hitting it. Killing two birds with one stone, if I'm allowed to say that, and actually doing the whole lot with this two-in-one primer. Don't be going around with any PVA, thin down PVA on the surface. On your bare plaster, all I've done, you don't go around sanding it, but I do have a sanding pad on my pole, and I just literally knock anything off. And you say, what, knock anything off? Where the plaster is probably splashed some plaster onto the surface, I literally lightly go over the surface just to knock any of that off before I actually come to spray. You don't need to be going around with, I mean, we joke about this, people wash walls down before they actually come to paint it. That's not the idea. The idea is your wash coat is gonna be so thin. If there is any still dust on that surface, it binds together, soaks in because you're using a thinned paint onto that surface. Once that's dry, then you can go over and give it a nib down. Again, with something like this, or lightly sand it over with the Merca Laros or something like that, a mechanical sander. Those areas in there that are actually previously painted, I have gone over with the Merca Laros just to improve, I don't know if you can see that, just to improve where there's been some, um, care's not been done when it comes to painting and there's been some splashes and bits and pieces like that. So those areas I have actually gone over carefully with the Merca, but I am not going over any bare plaster with the Merca. So I think I've covered everything for now. I'll just move you around so you can have a look where we are with everything else, if we can move you off there. And then what I'm gonna do is just get some spraying done and then I'll talk to you at the end of what it looks like. Right, can you see me? There you go. So these areas here, clearly that in the center is new plaster. I've not rubbed that down. I have gone over the wall areas there that are um, previously painted and the ceiling 
with the Mercularis, and that's where we are now. So you can just spam it. All those windows are bagged up. All the kitchen units are all bagged up, and I'm going to be getting the paint out now, having a little practice on a sample piece of papers there to make sure my fan pattern's all right and it's spraying fine. If I do need to thin it, that's at the stage that I will be thinning it and adding more. So I'm going to sign out for now. I will see you later on um, when we've got it all coated all out. And you're probably saying to me, what about the woodwork? Do you know what? That'll be another video. <laughs> That'll be another video. We will talk about the preparation, which is straightforward sanding, but another video will be uh, the woodwork. And I will use the um, possibly mm, quick shot. Yes. Right. See you in a bit. There we have it. I think I've been no more than 20 minutes since I last spoke to you. Now, if you remember, I told you I was using a, a 516 tip, which is the gold tri tech. Now, I started spraying. And you know what? That's one of my tips I should throw away, and I'm going to throw it away now because that was slightly blocked. It was giving me an uneven fan pattern. It was spraying fine, uneven fan pattern. And I thought, let's swap out. So, what I've actually gone to, what do you normally spray emulsion with? 517. So that's the, the turquoise colored 517. That sprayed lovely. I had a little bit of a tail to the paint, which not a big thing, just crank your pressure up slightly. I think I've gone more than what I'd normally want to go to. I'm around about 2200, which is, Wow, I would say fine. It's actually sprayed really nicely. So I'm going to say I've got a result. I've not got a lot of, you're always going to get bounce back and depending on how you spray some of these, like the bulkhead, there's going to be a little bit of spray in the air that is classed as fallout. It's not really over spray as in clouds of dust. I've not had clouds of dust. I've had my mask on and I've had the Max Vac. You can probably hear it there just uh, just there running at full power well just under full power and it's actually kept the air quite well fresh i should say but yes that has gone on fine it sprayed lovely that was at 25 percent. i would probably say next time around i would try it at 30. the obliteration i.e the opacity has well surprised me i didn't think it'd be as good as that onto bare plaster you can just see down there it's gone on nicely i've done a 50 50 overlap Technique wise, I was probably more of a case to trying to step around things to try and get it sprayed and going where I could. So this is only the wash coat, i.e. the first coat onto the bare plaster. Once that's dried tomorrow, I can go round and just nip down the surface. If there's any little cracks or filling needed, there's a slight hairline crack just there. I can address that at this stage because it shows. So all in all, really impressed with that isomat two-in-one primer as uh, a bare plaster primer. Remember, that video there, I struggled brushing it at 10%. Add more water to it, make it easy. It may work, work smarter, not harder. But spraying, 25%, I would probably go to 30% next time round. I would say it's a, it's a cracking base coat. It will give me a nice surface now to actually put the Isomat premium colour on, which I will more than likely spray it as well. So all in all, I think I've covered everything on this section. The next section you'll see me, because we don't want to go into 30 minute videos on spraying. I'm just going to talk to you about the woodwork, which is already prepared, but I'll go into that in a little bit more depth on the next video. Right, thank you very much. Please watch the videos at the end.